Hello, I'm Andy Jones and welcome back to Get Modern. In our uh, Intune handbook series of videos, today I'm going to cover the ad users and groups. Um, this is quite obviously a quite an important step within when you're first setting up the tenant. Without users and groups, you're not going to be able to allow users to enroll their devices and have them managed. Um, the only exception to that really is where maybe you're deploying devices that might be kiosk based. Uh, and they're not tied to users. So, uh, but otherwise, pretty much you're gonna uh, gonna need to add users and groups to assign all your policies and settings and allow them to enroll devices. Okay. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first step into the um, Microsoft uh, Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Within here, you've got on the on the menu, you've got a user option or users option, and there are various different things in which you can do and create users you, you've got the new user or guest user and you've also got a bulk option for for adding users um, primarily really if you create create a new user within here you're gonna natively add a new user account there are other options that you can use um, you could synchronize your accounts from your on-prem uh, on-prem platform in that case what you need to do is set up the Azure AD connect uh, wizard install that on your on-premise go through the wizard and uh, s essentially connect it to your tenant if you do that you will get the uh, the label here which say whether they, they've been uh, directory synced or not these are all native um, so you won't you won't see that here okay so what we're going to do is quickly have a look at creating new user You've got two options. Um, create a uh, a Jura, uh, Jura AD new user here, um, or you've got the invite user option. If you select the invite user option, this is where you might want to inv invite a third party and allow them to use their own organisation email. Um, when you do that, you they will receive an email um, invitation, something like this. Um, where it will say they've been invited and they'll get an accept invitation option here which will take them through a wizard to sign in and once you do that um, you will you will see uh, that they their invitation uh, kind of has been accepted and they can log on now at that point they won't be able to do anything unless you assign some settings uh, some permissions to them um, and roles but essentially they will be able to log on okay so if we go back to create a new user again and we just create one locally here so we'll call it test test user 4 um, give it a name test user 4 uh, by default they'll get the uh, say the on microsoft.com extension of uh, extension here however if you have added a separate domain your own organization domain you will get an option um, it may be one and maybe more actually so you could select that at the at this point um, so it's worthwhile keeping a note of that um, you may then want to either allow uh, an auto generated password I can have a look at that password or I can go and create my own if I want to um, depending on your policies for setting users up now I'm not going to set a, a group up for this user but at this point if you've got a specific users so say it's a um, a third party user or um, or maybe it's a, a HR user for example you then go and assign that user to that to those groups appropriately um, you've got a block sign in option here typically you would you wouldn't set that unless you want to uh, delay that person signing on. It might be a, a new joiner, for example, and you don't want them to have, to have the ability to sign on. Or you've already created this user and you want to go in and, and block their sign-in, uh, for example, they're just leaving the business. And one key point to raise here is usage location. I have raised this on another uh, video, but this is quite an important field. Unless you set this, um, it may create some issues further down the line so it's worthwhile uh, to make sure this is standard within your business process to set this business uh, this usage location by default 
I'll go ahead and select one. Select the wrong one there, United Kingdom. Okay. Um, I'm not going to uh, add the job details in for now, so I'll go ahead and create that user. And there you go, I've got a, a, a test user added. Okay. Um, just want to clear this up slightly. Uh, this is something I tested earlier, so I'll go ahead and delete those. Um, I want to quickly show you the bulk upload option. Um, there's various bulk options here, bulk delete, bulk, bulk invite, uh, but I'll quickly show you the bulk create. There's a uh, downloadable uh, template that you can, you can download there, uh, which gives you the format of what you needed to do the bulk uploads. Um, I've downloaded one earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and select that, my um, document, I'll go and submit that, and then um, hopefully within a few seconds or so, those accounts will be created. And there you go, test user 1 and test user 2. So um, that's the way you would perform that, um, uh, that activity or that method. Okay, if I go into a specific user now that has been created and it's just confirming me that, that uh, it succeeded there, which it will do to notify you. Okay, um, I've selected a specific user. Once that user is created, you can go and verify or go and change various settings. So I can assign specific roles, for example. Um, this user hasn't got any at the moment. If I wanted to go and select one, I could say, for example, uh, make this user a global, a global reader and a global administrator. So I could go ahead and do that, for example. So this is where you would set those. Now those, uh, the options that you get here are the default ones. Uh, they're uh, templated default roles that you can assign, but you may want to actually create your own that kind of meets your business process. Uh, so you can set specific permissions, what they can, what they can't do. Now that is possible as well. We won't go into that right now, but that is a possibility, okay? Um, we mentioned groups, hit groups, and that's where you would select groups, and that is where you would then uh, add that user to specific groups you've set up. Um, licenses, I've got a specific video on that, so please go ahead and, and seek that out. But that's where, uh, in order to enroll your devices, um, a user will need to have you know, an Intune license assigned to them uh, first off. So um, you may need to, uh, well, you will need to add licenses, at least an Intune license. If you want to have a look at the devices that are assigned or uh, aligned against a user, that's where you would select that devices option. And this user's got a Windows and an Android. Now there are various settings elsewhere within Intune where you can set uh, various restrictions. You may want to restrict the number of devices a user can enroll. You may want to restrict the platform or the type of device users can enroll with. Um, and even the uh, minimum maximum version of those platforms okay so seek out that information have a little dig around and uh, and maybe look some of the, our other videos which will give you an indication how you can do that um, the last manager uh, method here I want to show you is just authentication methods if you select the authentication method this is where you can add a new method now this user already got a few there, but maybe I want to add a uh, an email or a phone authentication method. So I would do select that and then choose my method. So I can select phone number, for example, and add in the details there. Okay. Again, this might be down to your uh, organisational uh, policy where you're setting certain methods for all your users. So that's where you would go and find that. Now, if you want to have a look at the activity, you can do that through sign-ins. It'll give you the activity from a user, last 24 hours, for example, or you might want to have a look at the audit logs, okay? Uh, and this one is the last month, it'll give you the details. Um, the, I think it's worth highlighting to you that this isn't the only location that you can create and adjust your users. Um, you can do that also within the Azure portal. So your Azure Active Directory is hosted within your within Azure. 
so if you go to your Azure portal log on down the menu select Azure Active Directory um, and then you've got your users and groups here so if I select users now that I can uh, I can now add users bulk operations for example uh, refresh and, and do my authentication method so similar activity there and one more option that you can where you can add and amend your user details is within the Microsoft 365 admin center um, I show this within the um, adding the Intune licenses video um, so you may want to go and have a look at that okay so for now um, just head back into the uh, admin center for endpoint manager this is the, uh, the selection of, of how you would add your users um, Oh, one last point I should probably show you is one key one is if you want to select or change that password for a user this is where you would do it as well so you select the individual user hit the reset password button um, and then you select the reset password there okay and any other details that you set up for that specific user say you want to change their their, uh, their telephone number for example you would hit the edit button there okay and go ahead and make make your changes and then commit them uh, so for now thanks very much uh, this was part A of the user and group setup um, if you want to go and seek out uh, part B we'll, where we'll look at uh, setting the, the groups up for both users and devices thanks very much <laughs>